Tony, welcome. Nice to be here. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited that you're here because um, it's kind of something that's like near and dear to me. Uh, talking about mobility and and how we do things to live a better life and be more mobile. And this ties in super well, and it's very timely because we've got you all the way in from Boston to check out our development, Evergreen Senior Living. Um, your friend Gaston, I had earlier on in the podcast in our early days, and uh, it's really great to have you. So I'd love for you just to introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do, and uh, we'll dive right in. I uh, get yeah, Adam Pook, um, Boston, Mass, and I started Adam Pook Longevity Health. So my, my background was originally in the physical therapy world. And I guess I consider myself a um, recovering physical therapist because my interest was always anti-aging. So I took this track at Sargent College, BU, um, figuring I could just go transform the world of, of aging. And the problem was the conventional stuff didn't work. And I guess one of the beautiful things about America is you get to fail for a long, <laughs> long time, but hang in there and start to figure things out. So um, with this ambition to try to rewire what age 65 means, what retirement means. Um, it sent me on a journey I never really quite imagined. It left the physical therapy world and started learning from other worlds. Um, I had my own personal injury background that made um, sort of my success quite urgent because uh, I was stuck in bed for a long time as a young person. I think a lot of people that um, do things differently uh, sort of do it out of necessity. There's some emotional urgency driving them um I'm kind of speeding right along but essentially i have a decent little practice in boston i'm popular there um and then uh, covid hits and, and not just covid as a virus that passed through but um as a massive disruptor because the way we were doing things went out the window especially if you're doing a job that's hands-on with a population that's already vulnerable basically March 2020, I am out of business. I mean, it is done. Um, I can't do anything. But this is in my DNA. It's in my bones. Um, so I did something I never did. I started making videos for Instagram. Uh, not because I was trying to save the business. Not because I thought anything was going to come of it. Because I needed to get out of the house. And this is what I do. Um, so I just started making videos. Okay, guys, we're stuck at home. Um, this is how frozen shoulders work. And just started telling stories. And editing and pictures and because like, you have to keep studying the anatomy in this kind of biz you get rusty very very fast um one of the people that saw my videos was gaston cordova in chicago great guy who you know who was the first person to call me out of the blue from an instagram post and say who the hell are you and, and so began um a friendship over years we never met it's kind of like um bruce willis and Sergeant Al in Die Hard. We talked, but we never met each other. Um, and then through um, someone we know in common, Mark Mashuda, um, Gaston was a physical therapist at Evergreen. He happened to be talking to Mark. Mark mentioned, um, I know a guy that can help you with some of the issues that you have. Um, would you be willing to talk to him? And Mark being Mark, we spoke. And he said, okay, I like what you're doing. I want to meet you in person. I'm in this healthcare field. I develop homes. I said, that's fantastic. One of my interests in solving this problem is actually changing homes. I think one of the big issues is not just the habits that you have, but the habitats you live in. Can we create living environments that actually make you younger because you live there? Um, can we invent walls and chairs and utensils that actually make you younger just because you use them. Um, and Mark, being an open-minded fellow, get your butt out here. Here I am in Chicago. As a matter of fact, I'll zip up in a second. I'm going to show my adopted <laughs> city pride. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, He's yeah. a hometown hero. Yes, so it's good to be that here. That is so cool. Well, I, I'm thrilled you're here just because Evergreen is obviously something that has been a really important project to us in the development and just building a community and um, not only just a community, but something that's, it's also deeply personal because we've had family members there for, you know, brief stints when they're rehabbing from post-surgery and need to be somewhere with more of an assisted living um, kind of lifestyle for a short term. But also we have family members that are there full time 
And what I love about that is it's a testament to what we're trying to do to continually improve the quality of life in our community. And so I'd love to kind of hear a little bit more from your perspective, the applicability to a senior living community and how these types of things improve not only just mobility, but lifestyle and livelihood and health outcomes for people that maybe have been struggling for years and not really realized the cause. And, and this is why I'm so excited to have you here because it's something I believe in wholeheartedly in my personal lifestyle and the things that I do. So can we kind of talk a little bit about the, the senior living community and the impacts that these types of things in your program have? Okay, <laughs> here we go. Let's go. <laughs> it's not being done well yet, yet. So my interest is anti-aging. So we get into what, what is aging? What makes us age? Um, more specifically, how come little kids look forward to their next birthday? How come adults don't look forward to their next birthday? We kind of know it. Like when you're 10, man, your next birthday, you are psyched. I mean, you're counting the days because with that landmark, you're aging, um, that milestone. Um, with the aging comes this promise that you're going to be better at stuff. You're going to be bigger. You're going to be stronger. You're going to get more responsibility. You can do more stuff. At a certain point, you stop looking forward to your birthday because that passage of time is actually associated with getting worse at things. I'm going to be able to do less. So my philosophy is, can we make you, say you're 80 years old, what makes you look forward to your birthday again? How do we make the passage of time be something that makes you better again instead of something that makes you worse? Um, and the answer is the mobility. And mobility is a hell of a lot more than just how you get from point A to point B. Um, it is your general capacity to adapt to stress. You are getting something new and you can get better at it. Over time, you can do more stuff. That's your mobility. Um, and then from my background, physiology, science, what does that boil down to in a human body? What, what is the particle level that mobility happens at? Um, what in the aging process is robbing us at the particle level? Um, and that's where ultimately I came up with this concept. It, wasn't, it was a concept that came from studying lots of people that were successful of a mobility culture, a mobility lifestyle. What are you doing in your everyday life that's defending that mobility? So we know that the mobility is coming from hips, from muscles, nervous system. Um, I don't want to get too sciencey here. We also know that there are processes constantly degrading us, constantly. People don't get old because they had a fall. They get old because slowly, slowly they lost some quadricep mobility, piriformis mobility, whatever. A bunch of tiny things were happening and it evidenced itself as a fall and then secondary to that, their life was never the same again. So if the processes that age us are happening very, very tiny, gradually, even below the level of awareness, how do you fight off something you can't see? Well, if you live in an environment that's accidentally treating those things that you can't see, then the shape of the walls, the things you're touching are actually the things that are keeping you young. And this is mobility culture, and this is where Evergreen is actually taking the risk. They realize their responsibility. Let's make the people that live here, not just paying rent and living here, how do we make the people that live here look forward to their birthday again? Well, we have to stop the aging process. Well, how do we stop the aging process? We have to provide them with the nutritious stress that stops an aging process. Well, how do we do that? We got to put it everywhere. We got to put it in the walls. We got to put it in the chairs. We got to put it in the shapes of the cups and the utensils that we're using. Um, we have to have a mobility culture. So that's how we found each other. And that's what we're doing at Evergreen, training the staff, not so much in the exercises, but the science of aging. And then training the staff and how we intervene in that science and putting literally stations all over the place. So what's going to happen is a place like Evergreen, you know, in your mind, you think assisted living, retirement home, and we see it. It's pleasant, but not terribly stimulating. The rugs look a certain way. There's wainscoting on the wall. Everything looks genteel, manorial. Um, what if that place looked like 
a jumpy house for kids or a trampoline park, but somehow for adults. Then what we're taking is a stimulating environment, putting in the walls, and we're actually creating an environment where people are losing themselves. They can move to a place where they start getting themselves back. That's what the mobility culture is. It's where architecture, um, design is actually meeting the science of what aging is, and we're blending it, and we're calling it a culture because it's part of the everyday life. It's not like you go to the gym and get better. Uh uh-uh. Outside the elevator is a place where you can actually grab something and turn it and get yourself better. It's providing the stimulation that keeps us young. Well, and I love that because I think this all stems from our culture at Machuda of innovation. And that's like, we didn't just come across you on Instagram, you know, with Gaston and just be like, oh, this guy's cool. Let's bring him in. It's more about the people like Gaston that we bring into our community at Evergreen and say, you know what? We believe in this because we believe in better health outcomes. We believe in the legacy piece. We believe in longevity beyond just surviving, but thriving. And that's really at the root of what this is and, and bringing you out to look at Evergreen and say, how are we continually doing things differently? Um, just the conversations I had with Gaston, um, you know, in this past year about the, the rehabilitation aspects and using things that most communities and are not using it with LIDAR and how we look at people's balance and their mobility and moving. But then it's not just the, the treating the symptomatic response. Now it's about the, the small you know, stepping stones in everyday life that keep us well and keep us mobile. And I think it's great and timely. And your story is incredible because I think we all experienced a little bit of this during COVID. We were all locked down. We lost kind of the daily routines of even just leaving our homes and going to the office and going out to lunch and going out to see people and parks were closed, gyms were closed. All these things happened. And you talk about the little pieces of the puzzle that chip away into causing a fall, a risk, an injury, and these types of things that it's just as important to us as younger people as it is to eventually us as we age. So I love this story because it's so timely in who we are as a culture and a community. Um, Talk a little bit about, you know, what the instrumental steps are in getting something like this started and then continually improving the mobility aspects of people in the community, because this, this is completely out of the box when it comes to senior living and assisted living. And I think that it's so exciting because this is something that we can replicate as a builder. We're not just building a facility anymore. We're building a lifestyle. Yes. A healthy life, a nourishing lifestyle. Yes. Imagine like working at a place that's going to improve your posture. Imagine assisted living where the people with the best posture, the ones that have lived there the longest. You go into these places normally, the ones that live there the longest are getting worse over time. Kind of accepted aging in place um, as being a source of deterioration. And is it outside the box? I think the box is in the wrong damn place. We're going to move the whole box (laughs) to where it belongs. All right. So you meet people, you know, on the airplane. What do you do for a living? I'm an anti-aging specialist. Yeah, what are you going to tell them something? And they go, okay, all right, well, what do I do for anti-aging? What's the most important thing? And I just go, strengthen your fingers. And they usually give me a look like that. <laughs> this is where construction comes in. So this is where the science comes in and where science meets architecture. And we need this so badly. I'm going to tell you a story in a couple minutes about the lack of innovation in healthcare is going to knock your socks off. Um, I'll tell you about the finger um, connection to aging. It's really pretty simple. Um, you know when you get a sesame seed in your tooth or crack filling or something, and the thing feels like the Grand Canyon in there because there's massive sensory density in the mouth and the lips and the tongue. It's very handy in case you're sleeping and a spider crawls in your mouth. <laughs> it's how we've evolved to protect ourselves. There's a similar sensory density in the fingers. In other words, the brain can't do a damn thing unless the fingers tell the brain where you are in space. And as a golfer, you understand the subtleties of the grip completely change the swing. Now, that's from golf. Now, so in my journey, I started as a crappy therapist and then Bill McInerney in Boston, who I wound up working with and having us for my offices, with Ed McGolf, the back or anything, taught me how to play golf. And I had no idea 
Billy McInerney, probably the best physical therapist I've ever known in my life, and he's just teaching me how to hold a golf club. So these ideas start percolating with each other. Um, so essentially, knowing that there's a huge body of science which supports the finger, the hand to brain connection. There's studies that show that the biggest risk of falls is actually grip strength deteriorating, not leg strength deteriorating. Um, you know, so I've spent a career figuring out why, and I kind of have figured out why, and we can explain the metabolic pathways. Um, but essentially what we're doing at Evergreen is building an environment that strengthens your fingers. So you're actually grabbing things. There's art, but it's on the wall. There's mobility structures built into the environment. So it's a part of living there. So yes, a part of mobility culture, you don't just live there. We know what your grip strength is and we're developing it and the staff knows how to develop it. And the caregivers are trained in this. So it goes down to the people, the habits, the habitat. As far as innovation is concerned, I've got a question for you. Tony, do you know where dumbbells come from, where that term comes from? Because you use them, I assume, you lift weights and stuff. Yeah. Use a dumbbell. Um, you mentioned the clapper. Um, okay, this is wild. Just to tell you how much this is needed, because once this innovation starts, man, we're going to see a revolution like you can't believe. So it's going to go from the assisted living into our own homes. That's how effective this is. Um, so it is Stuart era England. This is how behind the times mobility, fitness, anti-aging is and how much catching up we have to do. It's the 1600s we're in England. Um, England is a bell ringing culture. They love it. It's a part of the life of London, of all the towns. Um, it's pre-cell phones. So to know if the king died or if the war ended or something, the way people communicated was the church bells would, would ring to in inform the town folks something is going on. In different communities, actually had different sounding chimes. That's how you knew which neighborhood you were in. You could hear the church bells from that distance. As a matter of fact, hand bell ringing was actually the professional wrestling of its days, where you'd go to the pub, guys would get hammered, and they'd ring the handbells, and we'd see who was strong enough to stay in time longest. And it was the popular pastime. Guys would practice this at home, but so that they wouldn't piss off their wives and neighbors, they'd remove the cap of the bell, leave the inner, it's called the clapper, and that was made of a, um, a lead bar with a lead sphere attached, and they would practice their strength training for this sport using a muted or dumb bell. Now, we think we're weak, we're aging. So we go and we buy some dumbbells, but we are using the vestige of a sport that doesn't exist anymore, that no one even knows ever happened. And that's what we're stuck with. There's nothing to do with human anatomy, the physiology, what makes our posture happen. But we're stuck with this 400-year-old device because nobody ever bothered to say, why do we have this thing? There's something better out there. You just blew my mind. Yes, <laughs> head shaking, right. So we look at our chairs, we look at our tables, we look at our walls, we just assume this is what we got, this is where we live. And if we're deteriorating, I guess we just deteriorate. Uh-uh. So someone like Gaston, someone like Mark Mashuda at Evergreen, someone like me, because of the massive reshuffle that COVID threw, people that were kind of, out-of-the-box thinkers all found each other. And what we're seeing now is this incredible resurgence of um, creativity and appreciation for life that I don't think we would have had had this COVID business not happened. Well, I love it. And I think that that is just the perfect kind of way to tie this all together is just the opportunity for like-minded people to get together and find out how to improve health outcomes, longevity, livelihoods through something as simple as how do we move and how do we have not one big massive effort to improve something in a moment but the small moments that lead up to the improvement of life and and being able to enjoy life because i think that at the end of the day biohacking anti-aging these are all things that are coming up because i don't know maybe maybe covid reminded us just how fragile life can be and now we're looking at ways on how we can live the best fullest life we can and it's not just about doing it while we're young but as we age because science is only allowing us to live longer and i don't know about you but i want to enjoy it 
as much as I can, as long as I can. So I think that if we can look forward to aging because we're staying, you know, true to ourselves and staying true to being able to live a life that's mobile, then I think that's a completely different future for us to look to and look to the generations beyond us. So I'm really excited. And I just, I love your story. And I really appreciate you coming in today just to tell it because it ties in so well to what we're trying to do and how we're trying to innovate and how we're trying to change communities, but also just change a culture, um, a generational culture. It's not just about Evergreen. It's not just about the immediate community. It's about how do we look at this and approach mobility? And it all just starts with something as simple as a conversation and a, a, you know, meet cute on Instagram, if you want to call it that. Um, so thanks to Gaston for facilitating this. I really appreciate you making the trek out from Boston <laughs> to come see us. Yes, my thick Boston accent. I Sorry. hope you can understand what I'm saying. Through if, it. if my wife sees this, she's going to roll her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a myth. There's no Bo- I talk like Bobby Brady. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. everybody watch the same TV oh, shows. Well, thank you so much, Adam. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. Look it's great to be to in your town. Thank you. I look forward to having you back to good old Chicago. We'll see you soon. Thanks, man. We got it, we got it.